Hello, I am your teacher, Mr. Pachiti, and this is my classroom here in Orlando, Florida, and you have joined me for a very special lesson indeed. So put away your mobile phones, put away your Saturday night slam masters, it's time to concentrate, it's time to study. This is WWE 2K19, and this is Graded. So as you may well be aware, Cultaholic were recently invited to Orlando, Florida to the WWE Performance Center to check out the Performance Center itself, interview some WWE superstars and get the first hands-on experience with the new 2K game, WWE 2K19. I managed to play the game for a couple of hours and overall I'm really impressed with this year's edition. I'm already a fan of the WWE 2K games, but I did share some of the same concerns that you guys have had over the years. I'm going to grade WWE 2K19 here on six specific factors. Actors, gameplay, roster, graphics, creation, audio, and my career. And I'll also give a final grade for the game overall. So let's kick things off with gameplay. One of the gripes of previous editions of 2K WWE games is that things just feel too much like a simulation. You press a button, it triggers an action, and it doesn't feel quite like a game, if that makes sense. So after we entered the Performance Center, one of the first things we did was sit down, listen to a presentation about this year's game, and almost immediately, one of the first things the 2K developer said was that they were aware of these concerns and the focus this year was on fun, which was really refreshing to hear that they were aware of the complaints that had been made for a while and I think it's exactly what was needed. So what did they mean by this? First off, 2K have sped things up. When I played, it was immediately noticeable that everything runs a bit faster. It's less sluggish. Things feel more fluid, more enjoyable to play, and if you buy the game, I think you'll notice that straight away too. They've also introduced some fairly silly gameplay modes, like the big head mode, you may have seen it, where your wrestler looks a bit like a Funko Pop. And personally, that mode isn't for me. I won't use it very often, but I do think it sends quite an important message, and that's that 2K aren't taking things as seriously as they have done in previous years. And I don't mean that in a bad way, I don't mean that in a kind of they don't care sort of way, but rather that perhaps they realise that the realism-centric gameplay may have been getting in the way, in some cases, of a really fun user experience. They've also introduced a new feature called Payback, which allows you to swing the direction of a match by incorporating shenanigans, you can hit a low blow, or you can call for interference. On top of this, they've added a few new match types. You can play a Women's Royal Rumble now, as well as the return of the three and four corner tag matches, and you can even play at the Wyatt Compound. They've also added a new tower mode where you start at the bottom, and then with increasing difficulty, work your way up through opponents, a bit like Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, that sort of thing, and each of those tower modes has a specific style. So it might be that you can't do top rope maneuvers, no running, or each of your opponents may have a certain quality to them, like best high flyers or something like that. There's gonna be a load of those in the game, and then you can download more down the line. As I say, I played for about two hours, and in that time, I didn't experience any glitching. The gameplay was better, it was faster, and I think they've achieved their goal, because it was more fun. Gameplay gets a B plus. It's now time to talk about the roster. So in the past few days, it has been revealed that a few of the superstars who weren't announced as being part of the game, such as Ricochet, War Raiders, EC3, and Bobby Lashley will be available as DLC, but there are still a few pretty notable omissions, the biggest perhaps being Tommaso Ciampa. So Ciampa isn't in the game. As far as we know, he isn't going to be DLC and that sucks. He's the current NXT champion. He's been involved with Johnny Gargano in one of the best storylines, not just in NXT, but in the WWE as a whole. And he was in last year's game. Essentially, Champa's lack of inclusion in the game is a massive shame. My understanding is that every year there has to be contract negotiations as far as who goes in the game and who doesn't. And obviously, those negotiations this year didn't end well and he's not in the game. Who knows, perhaps this is Champa playing a heel and he doesn't want to be in the game for those reasons, but regardless, it's not good. I asked 2K about this at the Performance Center and I don't think the blame should be put on 2K personally because it wasn't their choice. I think it was completely out of their hands. In fact, they actually seemed just as gutted as we are 
to not see Champa in the game. Also missing is Nicky Cross and Brian Kendrick from the current roster, as well as a few pretty big legends, including Mick Foley and Mark Henry. With Foley's recent return at Hell in a Cell on Sunday, this isn't good news either. That said, the roster is still seriously stacked and includes new superstars like Ronda Rousey, Andrade Cien Almas, Lana, The Undisputed Era, Pete Dunne, Tyler Bate, and more. Overall, it's a great roster, but given some of those bigger missions, I can't give this more than a B-. On to graphics, and as far as the graphics go, this game looks great. We never really complain about the game's graphics themselves, as it looks about as close to WWE TV as a game possibly can do right now, and everything from the facial scans to the character models themselves all look really spot on. The arenas look realistic, the crowd looks decent, the lighting is pretty much spot on, there's not too much to say here. Graphically, this game gets an A. On to creation, and I didn't really get that much of a chance to get hands on with the creation suite. In fact, I generally don't use it that much. I'm a very lazy man who just downloads the hard work of other people. There are a few new features here, like new arena lighting effects. There's the ability to make your creator superstar look like a, a Minecraft character, all blocky. I don't know what that was, but perhaps the most exciting for someone who is incredibly lazy like myself is the ability to randomize your creator superstar's attributes. So if you just want to get in and play the game, you can do that very quickly. Year after year, we've seen improvements to the creation suite. And although there's nothing really groundbreaking here, it's still very possible to create ultra realistic titles, superstars, arenas as they're introduced on TV. And as such, this gets an A minus. Time to talk about audio. Commentary this year is provided by Byron Saxton, Michael Cole, and Corey Graves, and honestly, I don't have too many complaints. There are still moments that sound like sound bites, but hey, so does WWE commentary sometimes, and gone are the days of, he's putting those educated feet to good use, at least. The crowd sound nice, the entrance theme sound nice, largely, once again, it's like it sounds on WWE TV. Giving audio a B, because honestly, there is still work to be done on commentary, but overall, pretty good stuff. And finally, let's talk about my career mode. Honestly, I think this is probably the best career mode 2K have developed yet. The story itself has real depth, and although I only played it for about 45 minutes, I already do want to play more. Instead of just starting out in NXT like previous years, this year you start out on the indies and work your way up to NXT and then the WWE main roster. This is something we've never seen before and is a further statement of WWE being able to acknowledge non-WWE wrestling, which I think is pretty exciting. There are five core styles for when you create a superstar for my career mode, and your character can have up to two substyles. The biggest improvement here is definitely the story. 2K have clearly put serious time into making the narrative compelling, and it absolutely shows. I'm giving my career mode a B, and the only reason this doesn't get an A is because it's still not possible to play as a female wrestler in my career mode, which I think is such a huge shame, given the huge advancements in women's wrestling within the WWE, I really do think this should be a priority for next year. Overall, WWE 2K19 gets a B plus from me. As I say, I've always been a fan of the 2K WWE games, but this year's game feels different. It's less a simulation of what we see on TV and more a game. 2K have managed to balance fun and realism really effectively here, and despite a few minor issues, especially with the roster, I still think this is 2K's best WWE title to date. So that's all from me. Thanks for watching, and you can follow me on Twitter here. If you enjoy what we do here at Cultaholic, you can pledge to our Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Cultaholic. And most importantly, don't forget to hit subscribe and join us.